come to the crossroads, will we choose the path with the greater resistance? Not the path of least resistance, but the path of greater resistance. That's the path that you'll actually finish what you started. We all have times of dryness in our souls. We all have spiritual lows. I'm here to let somebody know that this morning that somehow thinks that you're immune to the same thing that we see throughout the scriptures. You're not. The reason the Psalms are written the way they are is because we are not immune to spiritual lows and dips in our lives. Times when we wander from God, times when we leave the God we love. But in those times, we are to remember, we are to keep, and we are to repent. Then Jesus closes with your motivational heed here. So right, here's the correction. Here's the correction that we just received to the church at Sardis. Listen, remember, keep, and repent. Hold fast to what you have before it dies too. And he's going to say, well, here's the promises that I'm going to give you. Here's the motivation for doing this. Because we say once you're corrected, it's really nice to receive some motivation to heed the correction. And God is so gracious, although he doesn't have to because he's God, he gives us the motivation. He gives us the promises that we can hold on to that keep us motivated to live a life that's pleasing to him. His first promise is found in Revelation 3, 5, that says you're going to be clothed in white garments. Remember what he said earlier? Look, there's some people here that haven't soiled their garments. White clothes are a symbol of purity. This is a promise that if you've washed, watch this, if you've washed your soiled garments in the blood of Jesus Christ, then your sins are covered. And when you get to that last day, having finished what you started, you will walk in white, pure and blameless before God. In Roman culture, that's what they would have understood. That wearing white was a symbol of victory and a celebration. Citizens would wear white when they're celebrating a military victory. Well, Jesus promises that like a Roman general returning from a victory that he won on the cross over all our enemies, he will return to us as the victorious king over sin and over death. And we can finish what we started because he finished what he started. I get to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Unsoiled garments. Jesus' second promise in Revelation 3, 5 is that he's never going to blot out your name from the book of life. Now, depending on where you fall on the theological spectrum, and you could be Calvinist, Arminianist, here's the reality. At the end of the day, what we want to know, whether you lost your salvation or you never had your salvation, are you saved by the blood of the Lamb? And have you lived a life that you have strengthened what remains, even in the dips and the lows? Have you awakened to what Christ is doing, or are you still living on the past of what you did when you raised your hand, or you walked the aisle, or you got dunked, and you said, I'm good. I'm going to live like hell, but I'm good. That's not going to work. It's a picture of Jesus as the judge here. We see this, that he is saying he will keep you till the end and you will finish what you started because he finished what he started. Because the third promise where he sits as the one who is making the judgment and pronouncing the verdict, I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Again, Revelation 3, 5. It's a picture of Jesus as judge pronouncing the verdict. Those who are faithful to the end, he will declare on the last day before the father that you are righteous, pure, and victorious because of what Christ has done. As G.K. Beale says or suggests you may hear him read aloud your name from the book of life wow I don't know which Stephen to, to ponder that hear my name I called a roll at school God of the universe call my name all going to experience spiritual lows in times when we wander from God. Every one of us will. What matters most is what you do in those times. Not that you have them, because we're all going to have them. And if you say you've never had them, then I wonder how strong your faith really is. Reach out to Jesus. Finish what you started. And here's the thing, I'll say it again, here's where the gospel reminds us. Here's the thing about your Savior, your King, the King of glory that we sang about this morning. Here's the thing about Lord, our Lord Jesus. He did finish what he started. He said so on the cross. 
it's finished. And now we're in the middle of the now and the not yet because he has finished the work. He has defeated. Our foe is a defeated foe. You need to remember that in the spiritual war that we're in. We're fighting a defeated foe, but his return is imminent and it's still yet to come. The question is, in the middle of the waiting, are we going to be like Finance 117, opulent, impressive on the outside, but dead and unfinished on the inside? Or are we going to be like La Grada, Sagrada Familia? And you know what I loved about this? I didn't even think about it until I just was oh, unfinished stuff. And it's like, yeah, but they're still working on it. They've never stopped working on it. And here's the thing. We're unfinished. And God is never going to stop working on you. But you're never going to be finished this side of heaven. So we're just like this project. I don't know when the completion date is. Only God does. But when it happens, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be right. In the meantime, just like this particular work of art, God says that you are a masterpiece in the hand of the master. Beautiful. Right now. Not finished, but still beautiful. Not completed, but still amazing. And the work is still going on. The masterpiece is still in process. If we'll strengthen what is there. We can finish what we've started because we have the same power available to us to do so because Jesus finished what he started. He said so on the cross, and now his resurrection power is at work inside of us. And it reminds me of Philippians 1, 6 that says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. No matter how long the building project is, just know that it's going to be completed when you choose Jesus. The final part of this letter closes like all the letters whoever has ears let them hear what the spirit is saying can i give you some good news about this church because i believe we can respond well apparently the church at sardis had ears and they listened in the second century the church was known as a bastion of doctrinal fidelity and a bold defender of the faith and a church remained there for another 12 centuries the question for us is whether today and every day we will hear what the Spirit is saying to us. And then when we come to the crossroads, will we choose the path with the greater resistance? Not the path of least resistance, but the path of greater resistance. That's the path that you'll actually finish what you started. So my question and my answer at the same time is, will we finish what we started? And I hope the answer is yes. I want this church to be a finishing church. The project's never going to be finished on us until Christ returns. But in the meantime, we can be the beautiful masterpiece that he has called all of us to be as his church, the beautiful church, the body of Christ in the earth today.